This video will demonstrate how to measure and analyze an acoustic signal in DRock. The hardware consists of a microphone connected to a 2755 power amplifier that now serves as a USB audio interface to the PC. Note that when an audio interface is connected, Windows will adopt it as the default audio device. We click the speaker icon down right on the taskbar and then the arrow next to the speaker volume slider. The laptop default output device speaker Realtek Audio is selected. After connecting the 2755, it is presented as a new default output device speakers USB audio codec. Because we want Windows to continue playing its sounds through the laptop speakers, we click its output device, returning it to default, and then leave the sound output list by clicking somewhere outside. To use an audio device in DRock, it has to be set up via the setup menu. If this has already been done before, this step can be omitted and you can skip this chapter. In the setup menu, select sound device, uncheck use setup if it is checked, and then open the input device pull down menu. Here, the 2755 presents itself as line USB audio codec, so this item is selected. The same for the output device pull down menu and the item with speakers USB audio codec. The default sample rate of 48000 Hz can be left unchanged, while the source receiver distance calibration is irrelevant now as we have no source. Now we click OK and have to enter a suitable device setup name, starting with the device name 2755. Windows identifies a USB device also by the USB port it is connected to. Therefore we add some USB port identification, for instance port 2. It is also a good practice to include the sample rate in the name, here 48000. We click OK and now we are all set and can start measuring. We open the measurement window. Vumeter 1 reacts to the sound picked up by the microphone so the setup seems to work. Note that if a Vumeter shows a negative level in dark red, it does not reflect the calibrated sound level but a level relative to full scale instead. Because there is no source, most of the source settings can be omitted. Nevertheless, because the measurement time also depends on the set stimulus length, we have to choose a suitable one, for instance about 5 seconds. The receiver signal should now be interpreted as a signal rather than a stimulus for an impulse response, so the signal button is clicked. We only have one channel, so the microphone configuration is set accordingly, being a single omnidirectional microphone. On the device tab, the proper sound device setup is already selected. The next chapter describes the online sound level calibration, which may be skipped if it has been done already. To perform a sound level calibration, we place a calibrator on the microphone and turn it on. Click Calibrate and wait until the calibration tone recording has finished and the level calibration dialog box occurs. With sound pressure level selected, we fill in the proper calibration level, which is 94 dB in our case. Now add a level calibration name for this hardware configuration. We choose SPL2755 and then click OK. And again. Now the level is calibrated and the VU meter shows 94.0 dB in black. The sound level calibrator is now turned off and removed. On the channel step, output is unchecked because we do not use it in an environmental sound measurement. Also input 2 is unchecked because we use input 1 only. On the project tab, autosave is unchecked. Now we will start the measurement and keep quiet until it has finished and the signal graph occurs. This is our recording. 
Now let's see what information can be extracted. The recording has a length of 5.5 seconds and a peak sound pressure of minus 50 millipascal. The auto scale function, which is normally active, has expanded the signal for maximum visibility. You can zoom in or out horizontally at a certain position using the mouse wheel. The axis can be scaled or moved by the mouse wheel or mouse movement. Horizontally and vertically. Revert to the original size by clicking the zoom full button for the horizontal scale and the auto scale button for the vertical one. In the leftmost part of the status bar, the horizontal cursor position is visible in samples, seconds and also meters based on the sound velocity. In the box at the right, the vertical cursor position is given here in Pascal. The signal shows a remarkable periodicity, so let's zoom in on a period. We place the cursor at the start and move it to the end while holding the left mouse button. The properties of the thus obtained selection are now shown in this box. The length is 89.5 milliseconds, so the frequency is in the order of 10 Hz. Right clicking the mouse erases the selection and we click the zoom full button to get the overview again. Now we click the magnitude spectrum button. The spectrum is on an octave scale, ranging from 16 Hz through 16 kHz but excluding the band around 10 Hz. So we now right click the frequency axis, choose the linear scale and zoom in by the mouse wheel. A peak is visible here and while standing here with the cursor, in the down left box we can read a frequency of 11.4 Hz. By pressing the control key while moving the cursor horizontally over the graph, it vertically snaps to it which simplifies reading out values in the second bottom left box. Back to the octave scale and the full view, we right click somewhere in the spectrum to choose a smoothing interval of 1 24th of an octave. Now we switch over to the project and parameters window. Here we see the LEQ as the selected parameter to be presented graphically in full octave bands from 31.5 Hz through 16 kHz. We can select third octave band or a table view and by clicking the top left cell all cells are selected and can be easily copied to a spreadsheet by pressing Ctrl C and after selecting a cell on a sheet in Excel Ctrl V. Ok, back to the rock. After clicking the properties button Properties window opens and many more parameters and settings become available to be covered in future videos. Now we go to the setup menu, choose parameters and then select all level related parameters by clicking the preceding plus. We see for instance the minimum C rated slow sound level LCS min. We click on it and several user definable entries occur, in this case two. We select frequency rating A and time rating fast and then click save. Now when we reopen the parameter setup window and select the level parameters, we can see that LCS min has changed to LAF min. In this way, the rock enables the user to adapt quite some parameters to particular wishes. This brings us to the end of this demonstration. Thanks for watching.